Hi, and welcome to today's show where we're going to be talking about all the projects that I worked on in the month of April, as well talk about a little bit of a donation drive that I'm wanting to hold with the help of you guys. And there's going to be an unbagging of a yarn from Jimmy Beans. The first thing I want to talk about is the only finished object that I have for the month of April. And this is something I actually cast on the day before I went on vacation. And it is out of the Knitting Fever and Queensland Cotton Collection o Coastal Cotton Ocean Mist. It's 100% pure cotton and it's pure soft cotton. It does feel a lot like... Kelly thought I love this yarn from Hobby Lobby. It's a good comparison. It's nowhere near as rough as the sugar and cream. It's, it's really nice cotton. It comes in 3.5 2 ounces, which is 186 yards. It's a number four weight yarn, and this colorway is called Green's Pool. I got three of these, and this is all I have left out of all three of them. The shawl wound up using 479.2 yards and 259 grams. And this was a very, very easy knit. I just kind of worked on this when I was on vacation and a little bit when I got home. And it was not very consistent work. I couldn't even tell you how many total hours I worked on it, but it did take less than 13 days. So, you know, it's super easy. The pattern Galaxy Lemonade Shawl by Shannon Dumblin. I'm probably saying that wrong, and I will link the pattern down below because if you go to Ravelry and search for it, it's going to show that it cannot be found. And I had to go into the comments and projects and find it where it was on a archive website. So I will link that archive website down below. But I really love how this turned out. I have it completely blocked. I love this one string because I wanted to show you. The yarn in some places did try to split, but it didn't really split. It was just kind of where it came untwisted. And when I was crocheting, I would sometimes accidentally pick up the yarns except leave one strand and kind of see like that. And that's what happened here. But I noticed it when I was binding off and it was way down here. So what I did to fix that, because you don't want to cut that because that's an individual strand of yarn. So if you cut that, then it eventually can unravel even more. And it's not like wool. Well, if it was wool, you can kind of felt it a little bit with some water and rubbing it to kind of make it stay. This is cotton. It's not going to do that. So I wanted to make sure that I caught it with another yarn. And that way it would not get caught on anything else and get broken. And you can kind of see... Where it happened right here and what I did was I cut a piece of waist yarn about 14 15 inches and I picked up that piece of yarn that was split about halfway in the middle and then I got one end and went one way and wove it in and then I got the other end and went the other way and wove it in so that way it doesn't interrupt the pattern at all it keeps the eyelets and then I made sure I caught the valleys and the mountains of the garter here and here. And now I can just cut these off because I've already blocked it. And I'm going to insert a video right here. But I wanted to take some pre-blocking measurements. So it is roughly 64 inches long at its deepest point. It is roughly 15 inches deep. So this is the strands that I'm left with after it dried. This did grow a good bit. The center is now around 20 inches deep. And the wingspan, I think, is like 74 inches long. So cotton expands tremendously. And now that it has expanded to its largest that it's going to go, I don't have to worry about it going any larger and these ends coming undone. This is why I always snip my ends at the very end after it dries. And these are actually pruning scissors and that's just because they were right there. 
but they work perfectly. And I'm just going to snip it close to the stitch, careful not to cut any of the yarns on the stitch. It is no longer visible. The only thing you can kind of see is where the yarn's thicker, right there in that garter where I sewn it, wove it in. But that's about it. And that's kind of on the back side of mine. Even though it's kind of just a garter and eyelet, because I did an I cord bind off, it makes it rounded on both sides, but on one side you kind of get a little bit thicker part, and that's what I consider the front. The I cord bind off is not part of the pattern, it's just something I added because it really makes a really nice side and bound off edge. I cord bind offs are really easy to do. They just take some time and it really does give a finished look to your project as well as it's a stretchy bind off and it keeps it from rolling on you, especially with this garter section. So the pattern did call for you to do this last eyelet section and then kind of do like two stitches and bind off, but I did go ahead and keep it in pattern and so this was a certain amount of numbers of this and I just did this one section more or one row more just so that it was kind of balanced and then I did my eye cord bind off and the main reason is because I wanted to use as much of the yarn as I could because so I really really love this colorway so the next thing that I worked on would be my close to you shawl And in that packing video, I talked about how I had made an error and then I ripped out to fix that error. And it wasn't really an error because what I'm doing is actually not even part of the pattern anyways. It's something that I'm modifying. But I forgot to do the eyelet sections across this side and I took out like that much of my knitting. So I did a lot of knitting on this. And I only kind of got back to where... I am. So I went all the way down to here and I have just done this much more. If I had kept the part that I had already knit on it, it would have been a lot more yardage to turn in, or not really turn in, but to have done for the month of April. So I gotta focus on that this month. That is my goal to focus on this month. I would like to get that off the needles for the month of May. We shall see. I did start some new projects for April. One of them was this Toft Mini and Daisy, and I had started this kit. There's a photo of all of the ones that come with it on my Ravelry page. I'll link that below because I took a picture of every one of the cards. It comes with six or seven little patterns. They're all these little flower related bulbs, and I decided to choose this one for my next one. And this is how much I have done on it. So all I have to do is finish decreasing his little body. This is his little stomach, or it could be his little bum. I haven't decided yet. I think the pattern uses it as a stomach, but I may use it for his little bum. I don't know. And I'm debating about putting pipe cleaners in him so I can actually make him stand up. The first one of the series that I made was the actual little bulb. And he has these little um, roots that come off of him. He doesn't have legs. So I don't know. I'm trying to think when I want to, how I'm going to display them in my yarn barn. And I could have him standing up, but to do that, I would need to do something to make his feet so he can stand up. And pipe cleaners or wire in the legs is a great way to do that. So I haven't decided. What do you think? If you think I should make him have posable feet let me know down below also let me know down below if you think I should do this as his belly and let him have a little belly bulge or if that should be his little booty so booty your belly and posable legs or not the cute thing about this pattern is his little petals you have to make 11 of these luckily Toft did not make them individuals and have to be sewn on because honestly that would not have happened anyways. I would have figured out a way to pick up the stitches because those are little and that would not be a lot of fun. But they do have you pick up the stitches and make the petals around his little head. So I can't wait to do that so I can really see him come to life. 
hopefully I'll be done with him before this weekend. I'm sure I will. Because I also started something else. Go figure. So this is the Amagori Octopus. And this is by Marie Liss Lily. And this is a free pattern. And I will be linking this down below because this is part of the donation drive that I would like to invite you to join in on. So my local knitting and crochet group at the library are making these and they're being sent to the local big NICU unit in Birmingham, Alabama. I think it's at Brookwood. I think that's the one they're sending to, which is where both of my boys were born. They were both NICU babies. And these are gonna go to all the preemies that come in the NICU. They have to have certain things done to them. Number one, they have got to be 100% cotton. There is no exceptions, 100% cotton. Number two, the eyes, if you want to do the eyes, have got to be um, sewn on eyes. There cannot be any kind of safety eyes. There can't be any kind of buttons like that because all of those things are choking hazards regardless of how you may try to melt the plastic or anything like that. It's not safe and the hospital would just not take them. Number three, they have to be free of any kind of smoke smells, animal smells, or anything like that. So what I'm doing personally is I am washing my hands every time I touch this thing. And I'm going to make it, I'm going to wash it, I'm going to dry it, and then I'm going to package it. Just to ensure that there's nothing on there. I've made sure as I've worked on it that this stays in a yarn bowl because we do have cats in our house and I don't want any kind of allergens to be passed on to these precious babies. I think they're sanitizing them there as well, if I'm not mistaken, and that's one of the reasons it has to be made out of 100% cotton because it can be sanitized at high temperatures and not do any kind of damage to the yarn or fibers. So this is actually being made out of some peaches and cream. And this is rosemary. And this is actually a number four weight yarn, which is a worsted Erin. The pattern actually calls for DK weight yarn, but I am knitting, or I'm knitting it. I'm crocheting it at a very tight gauge. I'm, I'm actually using a G hook on these, which is a four millimeter, but I'm being very cautious to really crochet tightly. So as you can see, there's no holes. I'm not doing the X stitch, which is supposed to help tighten your crochet stitches. This is just a regular single crochet. And they will be stuffed. I'm hoping to get two of these. You can put the little skirts on them, and I'll insert a photo here. This is the designer's photo. Some people are putting the skirts on them. Some people are not. I'm just going to use some other cotton yarns that I have that are waist yarn to make random skirts. Just because I think it's fun and cute. But they are basically just this head shape. And then you close up the stitches. And there's no sewing on because you actually make the tendrils as part of the body. So it's super easy, and I'm going to be posting this down below in case you would like to make some to send, and I will see that they get to the hospital. You can either send them to me, you can reach out to me, and I will give you my address. I am not going to put that down below for privacy reasons, or you can actually mail them to our library, which is where our group is out of. I will post that information and that address down below. And just put on your letter attention knitting crochet group or knitting group and they will see that it gets to the right people so if you would like to participate in that i would be very much grateful if you do decide to send some in and you send them straight to the library please take a picture and send it to me so i can share it in one of my videos and let everybody else know that you made some or even put it on my community tab i would be Super thankful for that. There is another kind of donation I'm wanting to do a drive for, and that is pet beds. But I think I want to talk about that in another video because that's something completely different. And so look forward to that hopefully sometime before next week. 
The last thing I worked on this month was obviously my snakes. And I had actually finished working on these during Ursula, who is OM Granny Squares Live yesterday. If you haven't seen that, you can check that out down below. I'll link that video. But I am caught up all the way through the 29th of April. I haven't done the last day yet. But my snakes are growing. And they are looking fantabulous in their colors. I love how these are turning out. They are a lot of fun. They are like a lot, a lot of fun. I'm not overstuffing mine because I would like for it to have some kind of movement. I would like for them to be able to be curled up in a way as they grow. And if you stuff them and they're like stiff as a board, you don't really get that whole snake look or liveliness to them. So stuffing them definitely is a skill thing that you need to kind of make sure you're not overstuffing. But you don't want to understuff so that when you bend them, they have squished places. Like, you know, this obviously, obviously doesn't have stuffing here because I'm still working this section. But if you were understuffing and it could be dent in, then that's not enough stuffing. But you want to let it have shape when it bends, but still give you the ability to bend it and turn it. Which is what these are doing. But I am in love with those. And if you can hear my dog snoring, I apologize. So now let's do the unbagging portion of this video. So a while back on my community tab, I occasionally will post links to some sales and things through Jimmy Beans or other companies that I'm affiliated with. This was one of those things. This was some Malabrigo yarn, the base, the sock metamorphous. I chose to get color number 322, which is Meraki. I think it's how you say it. I don't know. I will link that down below. These were a limited series. This color that I am about to unbag only has 13 left. And then some of the other colors only have under 10. And then there's one that has 15 and 32. So I think this is one of the things that once it's gone, it's gone. So if you like this yarn, you may want to head over and grab you some. I will link them down below. They retail 30... <laughs> They retail $24.50 and they are a fingering weight, 100% superwash merino sock yarn. It's 440 yards. It is 100 grams. Because this is 100% superwash merino, I personally would not make socks out of this because I personally like a sock yarn that actually has nylon in it because I think it gives it more durability. But there are many people who use these to make socks and they are fine with that. It's just not something that I would like to invest time in and have to worry about. So I went ahead and ripped open the bag. Oh, that's really pretty. So as you can see, it's kind of a gradient style dye job. I'm sorry that the sun is coming up behind the trees so my coloring is going a little crazy. There we go. This one has a lot of golds and yellows and some browns. It is applied yarn. It is the Metamorphous Sock, and this is color number 322 Marquee. It's very, very pretty. So, we need to talk about what I got at the Smoky Mountain Spinnery. I had mentioned and um, kind of talked about this in the previous video, but I didn't show the colorways to you, and I want to do that now. I did show in that video how the Copper Corgi dyes this collection for the Smoky Mountain Spinnery. It's a four colorway collection. There's a winter, a fall, a summer, and a spring. I chose to get the winter colorway, which is called Winter Wishes. Copper Corgi 
is a yarn dyer yarn dyer out of coastal florida this is the savannah sock glitzy it's 480 yards 115 grams of 88 percent superwash merino eight percent polyester and four percent nylon and this is mill spun and hand dyed in the usa and again this is exclusively for the smoky mountain spinnery and the colorway winter wishes so the only way you can get this is if you shop the smoky mountain spinnery the other colors i did not get but they are equally as pretty that comes in a regular finging weight base and it comes in the glitzy and i went with the glitzy with this one you can see the sparkles there but they run all the way throughout but that is the, the best place to see them is not dark on camera so this yarn retails for $36.95 and her little tag says the yarn that you hold in your hand has been mill spun in America and then dyed, twisted, and labeled by my hands in my southern studio. I hope you enjoy. Sarah Daru. And there's a little picture of her there. Super adorable. And I will link off her places down below. In that video I was looking for another one to go with this, but I didn't find one that just like jumped out at me. I kind of wish I did because I want to do something with two colors. I would love to do a two color work shawl or something out of it. But while I was looking at that, I showed the other shawl that was sitting down from it. And that led to this purchase. This is so colorful. This is some earth yarns Freak. fingering weight base it's hand dyed extra fine merino this one is 430 yards and 100 grams and it retails for 28.95 and this colorway is called just 3002 but i loved all those colors and this is the one i saw and i'm like okay that's going to be definitely something brioche and they had this color that I picked to go with it. So this is the same brand. This is actually their Harvest Base. It is a fingering weight as well. 100% super fine merino. 435 yards, 100 grams. The exact same. Just a different tag. This is color Thua. T-H-U-J-A. It retails for $27.95. And the cool thing about this company, if you see this little thing, knit one, plant one, each skein of earth yarn sold, plants a tree in Africa in partnership with TFF, Trees for the Future. So I'm all about standing behind and supporting a company that does something to better the world. But that, is going to be a brioche something and it's it's picking up kind of blue navy this is actually black it's like let me try to get it there i think it's just reflecting off my shirt but it's definitely black and i think that's going to be a super cool contrast for brioche i also picked up a um seven size seven needle tip of the likey needles there to try out I have a size 5 but I never really use a size 5 and it's in a 4 inch because it's just for hats and I like them I can't say that so many people love them I just can't say that I love them because the tips are not sharp it's, it's a nice wooden needle I can't deny that it just doesn't have the tip that I would like to have I would love to try their copper ones though so if you have the copper ones of them you know let me know what you think about them down below Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, you know, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you're subscribed to this channel. If you would like to participate in my donation drive, please reach out to me and let me know. I will have another video coming up about pet beds that I'm wanting to kind of take up for a local shelter because I mentioned on Ursula's Live, who is OM Granny Square, about the overflowing amount of homeless pets in the south and how there's just 
a really lack of care for them, except for these small groups who are privately funded and they need donations from people like us to keep them going.